If you've ever had an intense romantic obsession or infatuation with somebody before to the point where you felt like you had no control over it and it was completely ruining you, there's a strong chance that you may have been experiencing something called limerence. Limerence is an experience of having an uncontrollable desire for someone. Now, this won't be the typical type of thing like when you have a crush on someone or you're dating somebody and they're on your mind a lot. This is gonna be way more severe and it's gonna consume you to the point where it interferes with your life and your everyday tasks. The thoughts about this person will be so ruminating and hard to control. You may constantly replay scenarios uh, of situations that you had with this person, or you may replay scenarios of potential situations that you think you may have in the future, kind of like uh, unrealistic fantasies. They'll just be on repeat obsessively. So this is what I wanna talk about today, limerence. And I wanna take this video kinda slow. I really want you to be able to process and digest the information. I wanna really dive into this. So just as a reminder, I have a degree in psychology, but I'm not a licensed mental health professional. I'm gonna mostly be talking from my own personal experience dealing with limerence, and I'm not really gonna be citing like textbooks too much. Uh, I will put some sources below if you are interested, but I'm mostly gonna just be sharing my own insights and some things that I've learned about this on the way. So I've personally been limerent over three women in my life uh, that I can remember, like the most important ones, it was definitely, there were three of them. And every time it was a similar situation, it was a girl that I was dating or, you know, maybe we had something mutual where we both liked each other and then something happened where she decided to end things. So that kind of triggered a feeling of abandonment in me and I would become very limerent over that person. But the truth is every time it was usually something that I did wrong or something that I felt like I did wrong that caused them to wanna end what we had and that left me feeling very shameful and guilty of my actions. But it's gonna be different for everybody. The reason that you're limerent over someone, everybody is gonna have a unique story and background. You can be limerent over people that you don't even know like celebrities or influencers and it doesn't have to just be somebody that you're romantically attracted to. It can also just be somebody that you Want to impress maybe somebody that you really want to be friends with this is typically what like these celebrity stalkers are dealing with you know the people who are just like they get so obsessed with somebody who's famous somebody that they may follow on instagram uh, a really good movie about this actually is called uh, ingrid goes west it's a really funny movie about a girl who gets obsessed with uh an Instagram influencer. But for the sake of this video, I'm mostly gonna be talking about limerence in the sense of romance. Someone that you probably actually do know in person because I feel like that's just a common struggle. I feel like many people get very obsessed uh, over romantic interests and I think that it would be most helpful to talk about that. So let's go over some signs of limerence and how does it show up? How do you know that it's limerence and not actual true love or true feelings for somebody? So I have a list here. I have about 10 examples that I'm going to go over with you. So the first one is you have constant intrusive thoughts about the person to the point where you can't even focus on everyday tasks. The thoughts are going to be so like, like you have no control over them. They just are constantly intruding uh, your mind all day long. The person is all you think about. That's like pretty much the number one sign of limerence. Another one is you have grandiose fantasies like having a wedding, starting a family together, going on vacations and so forth. Uh, you kind of just have all these unrealistic fantasies of you like having, like basically building or sharing a life with this person. You may have unrealistic fantasies of saving the other person. If you're a male, especially, you might envision uh, you like saving the other person from danger. Uh, this can be called a hero fantasy. You may have uh, a desire, a strong desire or need to impress the other person. So maybe you'll try to purchase something new or do something really extraordinary to get their attention or impress them. Maybe pursue a degree or buy something really expensive or just make some really drastic change to your life in order to uh, have this other person notice you and accept you. So kind of piggybacking on that one, you may change something about yourself, like your, uh, your appearance. It might be something really extreme. Uh, just to get that other person to notice you. The next one, you don't have any boundaries with them. When they say jump, you say how high. Uh, this is another prime example of having, being limerent with somebody. They kind of control you in a sense. They have sort of a, a sense of control over the way that you feel. You may feel as if the other person will complete you. You feel like something is missing in your life and this person has that thing that you're missing. Another one, you may constantly experience highs and lows. You may feel really high if they give you attention and then you may feel really low if they ignore you. Uh, your emotional state is kind of dictated by this person. 
Uh, it's very dependent on whether or not they're giving you attention or whether they're not whether or not they're in your life or not in your life it's kind of your happiness is kind of dependent on that you may experience extreme shyness and insecurity around them you feel like you can't be yourself that's another one i personally have dealt with all of these so i'm talking mostly from experience and then I, obviously i did some of my own research and realized that these are all uh, pretty common signs of limerence. So what causes limerence? Well, it seems like it's pretty common to be limerent over someone who's not reciprocating your feelings or your love. So my own personal insight into this is when I was dealing with it and what many psychologists say is that it basically signifies an unmet need that you may have had in childhood, such as a poor attachment to one of your parents. If you grew up in a very chaotic home, you might find safety with this person and you might find safety in the fantasies and the thoughts that you have about them because for whatever reason this person kind of makes you feel safe uh, and they make you feel loved which maybe that you maybe you didn't have with your caregivers you didn't have in your own home and also the thoughts and the fantasies that you have about this person uh, it might kind of feel like an escape from your traumatic life and that's why we get so I mean we're really just addicted to the fantasies that we have and it's in a sense we're just trying to look for a way to escape the pain so to speak because when you didn't have a healthy childhood a healthy upbringing or a healthy attachment to a safe parent you may try to seek it out in someone else so maybe this person that you feel limerent over gave you some kind of attention or made you feel a certain way that made you feel good all right, so now here are a list of key insights that I've had, you know, kind of dealing with this, tr trying to work my way through it, trying to figure out how to overcome it. So the first one is limerence doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the person you're limerent over, but more so your desire to feel wanted. So this is more about a problem that you're dealing with, you know, low self-esteem, insecurities, like I said, childhood trauma. So it's important to understand that. Even though you feel like this other person may complete you, it's not the case at all. This is a this is really a you problem. And that's the first thing that you have to kind of accept if you're going through this. Next one is lonely people are usually more likely to be limerent. Um, people who don't have a healthy support system, whether it's friends or families, uh, they usually don't have, you know, a good, a good group of people around them to tell them, you know, maybe for them to talk to and for, for people to tell them like, you know, you kind of have to stop with this. Like this is an issue, right? So the next one is you're more very likely to be limerent if you're the type of person who every time somebody shows you kindness or generosity, you immediately feel attracted to them or attached to them in some way. This again can come from a lot of, you know, childhood type trauma, a lot of not feeling worthy enough. The other thing to understand about limerence is that this can sometimes last for years. Sometimes I hear about people literally being limerent over someone for years so don't feel bad or embarrassed about it the worst thing you can do is try to suppress this um you know be honest with yourself if you've been limerent over somebody for a number of years i've definitely have dealt with that so it's it's actually i think more common than you probably can imagine the other thing is you need to accept that you're addicted to the fantasies and the thoughts and you have to accept that the sooner that you can accept that this is really just like an addiction better chance you have of getting over this another insight i have is we will do just about anything to avoid the truth and to and to face pain we will avoid like humans will avoid pain at all costs we don't like to face the truth about things we like to live in a lot of like a fantasy land and when we get stuck in these sort of limerent fantasies it distracts us from feeling the pain that needs to be felt because what you have to do is feel the pain of rejection the pain of being unwanted in order to overcome it which brings me to my next point is that this whole thing is often very emotion based you have to get in touch with your emotions. You have to get used to feeling. There's probably a lot of emotions buried deep in there that you aren't expressing, that you aren't really letting out. And that's really important. That's what I kind of realized when I was trying to get over my, get, get over dealing with limerence for myself, is that I had to learn to feel. I wasn't feeling at all. I was just trying to repress my emotions and find happiness in somebody else. It's important to understand that limerent people are living in a state of delusion who can't face reality. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but that's usually the case. We're usually having these grandiose fantasies. We think we're gonna one day end up with this person, but the truth is it very rarely happens. And if it does, it's not probably not gonna be a healthy relationship because you're limerent over this person because it's all about you and something you want and some selfish need. You're not like this because you actually want to like give love to this person. Being limerent is not true healthy love. This is a very unhealthy toxic attachment. 
real love takes time to grow and evolve. So if you're limbering over somebody that you barely know, that you haven't even really spent any real time with, uh, that's kind of how you could tell that this is not real love and it's just some limerent fantasy that you're dealing with. Okay, so how do you solve limerence? How do you deal with this? The first step is to not demonize yourself for dealing with this. Do not get ca uh, caught up in things like guilt and shame. Understand that this is actually fairly common. It's something that a lot of people deal with. You know, don't feel bad about it. It's just a product of the way that you grew up. Uh, it's, it's really not your fault, but you do need to take accountability and you have to be honest with yourself if it's something that you're going through. Limerence will usually uh, run its course on its own, but there are things that you can do to get out of it sooner. You have to really work at it. Uh, it's something that you know you, you really got to put some attention to and like I said be very honest with yourself The best thing that you could probably do is work with uh, a licensed therapist or even maybe there's like certain life coaches Relationship coaches that deal with this kind of thing definitely would recommend working with somebody who has experience in this and Maybe has been through it themselves. However, I know that that's not an option for everybody due to you know financial reasons and insurance and so forth. So I'm gonna give you some things that I personally did to get over it. As soon as you catch yourself in these limerent thoughts, immediately label them as limerence. Just say these are limerent thoughts, you know, even use the word limerence if you want. You can use the word, you can even just say this is a fantasy, it's not reality. The more you can become aware of them being there, the less intrusive they will be. You don't really wanna resist them or try to suppress them or get angry at yourself for having them, but more so just label them for what they are. They're just thoughts, all right? And they're not reality. Reality is only right here and now. Reality is never ever happening in here. There's reality and then our mind filters it. It goes through, we see something and then our mind tries to make sense of it. And whatever it's making sense of is never the actual thing. You understand the map is not the territory. So just understand that. You also have to face reality. Just accept that it's never gonna happen with this person. Just rip the band-aid off right away. You're trying to fit your foot into a shoe that doesn't exist. If it were meant to happen with this person, it probably already would have, uh, is my experience. Even though I know it doesn't feel like that and that's really hard to accept. Sometimes we're in these sort of delusional states of mind and we don't want to accept that, uh, you know, it's just never gonna happen. So that's definitely step one. Because even if it does happen, which maybe sometimes it will, uh, to be honest, actually, one of the girls that I was limbering over, we did end up sort of dating uh, in the end again, but it didn't even go anywhere uh, because it was, it was toxic. I was, you know, still kind of limbering over her, so that wasn't ever going to work. It wasn't a healthy, it's not like a healthy kind of dynamic. So like I said before, do not be afraid to discuss it with somebody who will actually listen. A therapist or a coach is great, but even just maybe a trusted friend, uh, don't be afraid to open up about this. Maybe even tell them a little bit about what limerence is and educate them a little bit and just let them know this is something that I'm dealing with. And it really can help a lot to talk to somebody about it. It might not necessarily cure it. You got to kind of do a lot of different things. Talking about it alone might not really fix this, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So don't be afraid to open up to somebody. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to dissect every little thing like I was, you know, starting to learn a lot about trauma and just why I'm like this. And it got to a point where I was getting too obsessed with this and I was like really trying to just understand every little facet of why I'm like this and everything that I've been through and what do I see in this girl that I, I feel so obsessed over her and just to the point where I was starting to drive myself crazy and that stuff is really helpful. There's a lot of content that can kind of make sense of a lot of this, which I do recommend you watch, but, um, at the end of the day, you just need to accept that, like I said, you're very addicted to the thoughts and fantasies and you wanna just really pull yourself away from that. And the other thing, if you do work with a therapist or somebody like that, they might not um, have it in them to just give it to you straight and tell you that you're just living in a fantasy world. They might try to, you know, therapists are pretty good at usually showing a lot of compassion and they really wanna, you know, make you feel safe and stuff. But sometimes you do need to just be told, like, listen, you're living in a fantasy world. You need to pull yourself out of this. You can do it. Uh, but it's gonna take some time and dedication. So that's why I said it's good to work with, if you are gonna work with somebody, try to make sure it's somebody who really understands limerence. Uh, that, that's just my advice. And the best way to really overcome this is to prevent it from happening in the first place. So when you feel yourself starting to think about someone obsessively in this way, try to catch it early on. 
Uh, because in my experience, the more you allow it to happen and the more you allow these thoughts and you get addicted to them, uh, the more that time goes on, the stronger they're going to get and the more intrusive they're going to get. So as soon as you notice this is happening from the beginning, try to stop it right away. You know, I recently felt this happening with this girl that I uh, kind of met through Instagram. She's like a huge influencer. Um, I did kind of know her. We had some Zoom calls together and I felt myself like getting kind of limerent over her. So I just like right away, as soon as I felt like that was happening, I just stopped it. Like I didn't, I didn't allow it to get too far. Started noticing like, oh, you're doing that thing again where you get limerent over people. Try to end it right away as soon as you feel like it's starting to happen. So that's just some information I wanted to give you guys. You know, there's so much that goes into this. Definitely didn't cover everything in this video. Just a little bit of an introduction about limerents just so maybe hopefully it'll help somebody who is dealing with this and you can kind of understand what it is. It helped me a lot just knowing that th this is called something and that other people are dealing with it really helped me a lot like that alone uh was a huge step up for me and being able to label the thoughts as limerence really helped me um, not to say i don't still deal with it sometimes i definitely do but you know it's it's a progression and it's definitely it definitely takes time so just be patient with yourself and be compassionate with yourself above all so thank you so much for joining me today hope this was informative let me know what you think